Hi, this is Sarah Mikesell with the Pig Site, and today we're here with Dr. Scott D. He is the Director of Research with Pipestone Veterinary Clinic. Um, thanks for being with us today, Scott. Great to see you, Sarah, in person. I, I love know. it. I love Yay. it. Yay, and we're here at the Lehman Swine Conference, and you just got done talking to the group about PERS and some new research you conducted. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We just finished a big study looking at this new variant we call 144, specifically lineage 1C. So it's a newly emerged isolate of the virus. As you know, the virus mutates and every once in a while, a real hot new strain pops up and causes a lot of trouble. Right. And that's what we were studying. And we, st we wanted to do this because the industry was in a panic mode and they really seemed to be giving up. They seemed like they're gonna throw in the towel that this virus was too much for them. They were saying, well, it's the worst strain we've ever seen, vaccines don't work anymore, and biosecurity protocols are no longer effective. And so that's a defeatist attitude. And when we wanted to see if any of those questions were true or not. So we conducted a study looking at each of those observations to determine, is this indeed the worst virus? How does it compare to, say, the 174, the more recent challenge virus? Do vaccines work? We did a vaccine study to look at uh, two different vaccines versus non-vaccinated pigs. Was there a difference? And then we conducted several biosecurity transmission studies looking at, can we dis use disinfectants to kill the virus? Can, does the virus go through the feed? Do showers work, et cetera, et cetera. So it, right. was, it was quite a, comprehensive. Uh, quite comprehensive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the nice thing about this was we basically took action in July and here we are talking today. <laughs> For the which first is fast, time, right? which, which this is, is fast. so fast, we've just finished all the an analysis of the data basically a couple days ago, and our goal was to present it here because the university invited us uh, for a special presentation at the layman. So we wanted to give them some good stuff for Very people good. to take home. Very good. So, so what did your results show? Yeah. So the first question was, is it the worst virus ever? Well, it really wasn't. When we took the 174 that we've used in the past and we compared it to pigs with either that virus or the new 144. The 174 was actually worse based on growth rate, mortality, treatments, et cetera. So that was maybe not the case. It might not be the worst virus we've ever had. It's clearly pathogenic, but it's, right. it's two vaccines don't work. Well, vaccines worked extremely well. We tested the Behringer vaccine, we tested the Elanco vaccine. Both of them protected pigs and non-vaccinated pigs did significantly poorer when it comes to growth rate, mortality, Got treatments, it. et cetera. So that kind of threw that one out. And then the biosecurity protocols worked just fine. So the disinfectants killed the virus, feed mitigants neutralized the virus, taking showers helps. Um, one of the interesting things we learned was this virus can be spread through feed. Okay. And we, one of the, I think one of the more interesting parts about all this is we had this hypothesis that we were seeing farms getting infected in say, very, very remote parts of the United States with, oh. for the first time. Wow. Where in the world are they getting the strain with this 144? And so we had an idea that, well, what if this producer buys soybean meal that's contaminated with a virus? Right. And we know how protective soybean meal is to viruses. We've yep. talked about that before. Yep. What if they c transport a load of soybean meal to their mill, and in that process they contaminate their truck, then they backhaul mm -hmm a load of complete feed from the mill to the farm and feed it to pigs. So we set up models to replicate that coordinated sequence of events. And we showed that if we put contaminated bean meal in, a, in some model trucks, and then we empty those trucks and fill it with clean, complete feed, right. that feed can get infected and pigs can get infected following consumption of that feed. So the feed gets contaminated right. by the dirty truck because there was no intervention right, in between. No and then they fed it to pigs and they got infected. And that's what a lot of producers were doing this summer is backhauling this complete feed from their mills. We thought that might be a way this thing could be moving around in a very, you know, fairly short period of time. Right. You could move it over a long distance. And so that's one of the, I think, the more interesting take homes from this yeah. is there's, there are some factors working together that right. could potentially move the virus. Very good. Yeah. And, and so for your study, I know this is just right out of the gate, right? But how will this be disseminated kind of out to producers? And, and what does it really mean to them? Yes. One of our goals was we want to get this out to the world. Right. This is not Pipestone private information. This is for the industry, for the benefit of the greater good. So this is our first uh, delivery. Right. Uh, talking to 
people like yourselves. I think we've got several interviews and things yep. looked up, so information will be, I think, all over. I think this will literally go viral. Put a little pun there, but <laughs> we'll go to Iowa State in November and talk about it there. Okay. So we're going to try to just keep on plugging it until people have said, okay, that's, I, get the, I get the message. Right, and, yeah. and it's because you, you kind of started out saying that there was kind of a defeated nature, mm -hmm. right, with yeah. this, and, and that's the whole point, really, exactly. right? Exactly. to help people understand yes. vaccination works, yeah. right? That's the goal of the study, was to tell people not to give up. Right. Tell people that we know what we need to know, we have the right tools, we have effective products, we can battle this virus just like we've battled all the different strains. This right. is a highly virulent virus, but it's no different than what we've dealt with in the past. So, and then along with that, it's all those biosecurity measures, right? To yeah. break, break the chain, yes, right? Yes, yes. You've got to have a comprehensive approach. You've got to have a vaccination program right. in conjunction with a comprehensive biosecurity plan that looks at transport, looks at people entry, looks at fulmite dis uh, disinfection. Now manages feed differently. Right. We also showed that air filtration works with this virus, I forgot to mention. So That was really interesting. Yeah. I mentioned that just a little yeah. bit, Scott, because it was really, yeah. I mean, you showed some visuals and it was really interesting. Yeah, so we put these air collectors in the infected rooms and we collected air from 144 positive pigs over time. And we found that, yeah, we found aerosols that were positive with the virus and we had this collector hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. So up and above, in the, up near the ceiling of the, of the, of the pens, there was a virus in the air. Then we tested the air coming through the filter bank on its way out of the barn right. and found that all those samples were negative. And so the filters really work on work. this virus. Yeah, so yeah. we know how to stop this virus. I think the biggest take home is this feed risk and this potential backhauling right. risk of trucks working with a feed and then getting, you know, just the accidental contamination. So that's something easy to fix, just don't do that. Right. You know, there's lots of easy fixes here. Right, and feed is sometimes maybe, a, you know, an afterthought with the biosecurity plan, right. right? Exactly, that's important. Not many people, I think, pay enough attention to it. It's fairly new information. Right. But I think this PERS information will heighten the awareness that feed is a risk factor that you have to be careful of, not just for PERS, but PED, as we've shown, and right. many foreign animal diseases. Yeah, very good. Well, hey, thank you so much for sharing this this brand new research, really, right? Yep, hot off the press. Just finished it a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> the layman committee wanted us to present it, and so we got it done. So here, very this good. is the first showing. I will, I will sh mention, too, we have heard so much of this, that this collaboration, right, with mm -hmm. industry, that, that's certainly been a theme throughout this whole Lehman conference, wouldn't you say? Well, this was definitely the case here because we, as I mentioned in the presentation, we, we partnered with Beringer Ingelheim and brought their expertise to right. the uh, team in many different ways. Um, and so they were partners with us in all aspects, cost sharing, you know, intellectual contributions, sure. working in the barns, collecting the information, we couldn't have done it without BI, so that's a great example. And it's being already mentioned by several other people in the audience today, how well industry worked with practice yeah. to answer some questions. In the university, keeping the, you know, yep. that component as well, right? Keeping the, keeping the communication line wide open so the, everybody in the audience today could hear hot off the press what, uh, what we did. Very good. Well, thanks again, Scott. Thanks, Sarah. This is Sarah Mike, so with the pig site.